Hey there folks. So, let's say you've got your uh, shiny new analog pocket and you know, you're sitting along playing your games, doing whatever the heck it is you do with these things. I don't know, they take carts, presumably they play games. Um, and the itch comes, the desire, you need to mod it, you need to take it apart, you need to do something. Uh, well, I haven't even had it a week. Let's take it apart. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I gotta know. Inquiring minds gotta know. Alright. Probably should turn it off first, huh? So, I know I'm not the first person to pull this thing apart. I've seen another video already. Uh, where the heck is that bit? I think that's it. But, uh, I gotta take it apart anyway. I gotta know. I had the right one. I hate hex bits. But here we are. Analog opted to use. I have a hex bit that says 1.3 on it, and that seems to fit. Wait, are those hex? Nope, that's Torx. Okay. I couldn't tell. Freaking long, whatever they are. Ah, that's so much better. Okay. It is. Do, 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 do. Torx T6. You gotta use the right screwdriver. Or you're gonna run into problems. Four screws, and then I believe the back panel just lifts off. Is that it? Yep. Nothing to tricky. Nothing tricky to worry about there. The the shoulder buttons are self-contained. There's springs inside the mechanism. You don't have to don't have to deal with anything funky there. Here we get our first look at the uh, custom cart slot analog had made for these things. And the battery. Get that unplugged. Do I have the specs on the battery on this thing? I don't remember what they are. Oh, that's right. It's just a battery cover. And then, okay. It's clean. Very clean. I like, like how they did that. Um, 4,300 milliamp hours. That's a whole heck of a lot of battery for... A little battery life it gets, but all right. Uh, I am told that you can just slide this whole thing off without having to deal with that sticker. And uh, based off the fact that this lifts pretty darn high, I'm thinking that's true. We need to remove this board first, probably. Let's find out. plastic tab holds on to the back. We can angle it up, but I'm not liking my odds there. I'm going to slip that back down. Try again from the front. I'm just jamming my fingernail under the board and then taking my spudger and gently, gently pushing the, the uh, plastic latch clip. Well, the board lifts up. I don't want to apply too much pressure because I don't want to break that clip. Can't get parts for these things. Ooh, that's even better. We get a second spudger.
There we go. Oh, looks like we need to release that too, anyhow. That comes up, and there is the flat flex we can release, and we have that whole board out. guessing yep okay so it does that it slides <laughs> you probably want to take this cable out first I think I got lucky but there you go you can pull that out without dealing with that QC sticker All right. I don't think I damaged that cable but Probably don't do that, just in case. Short screw in the middle, short one, the rest are long. Short goes there. You put the long one in there, you're going to ruin your shell. Just lift out? I think it does. Oop. Gotta pop our minion SD card out. Yeah, that's it. That's that simple. Um, the screen uses one of those mezzanine connectors and it clips on. Be careful popping that off, but it should come off pretty easily. And there is that glorious motherboard. I think Analog did a fantastic job with this. I don't know. But anyway, here's what we got. The um, clearance between the FPGA and the screen itself back here, if you are thinking about hardware mods, is the thickness of that pad and that's it so I wouldn't count on using this area for anything this FPGA up here I believe it's the main system FPGA uses the screen itself as a uh, heat sink and the screen does get notice noticeably warm in use nothing like concerning but like if you're used to Game Boys you touch the Game Boy it's nice and cold you touch this thing, it, it'll it'll be warm. Let me wipe that off here. There's your Altara Cyclone 5 or Cyclone V. I don't know what the V is, if it's supposed to be a stylized 5 or whatever. Uh, and then down here we have the Intel Cyclone 10, which I, I just thought it was kind of neat that um, we have an Altera branded FPGA and an Intel branded FPGA, even though Intel makes both of them. I think this is just a uh, part of their older lineup, but there's the motherboard. I don't know. I just, I just really appreciate it. I wanted to stare at it a little bit. I'm surprised at how easy this thing comes apart. I thought it would have been more difficult, but here we are. We have the screen in here. This is bonded to the lens and probably adhered down. I'm going to not remove it because I really don't want to end up destroying it by accident. Uh, we have on this left side here, or I guess right side because I have it flipped over, we have this board that has the power switch and uh, volume rocker. I have no idea how it's supposed to come out. Maybe just force. I don't see any latches or screws or anything. But I'm not having any luck. Yeah, maybe, but I don't want to keep tugging it and break it just in case. 
actually, now that I'm tugging on it, I can see that I was just tugging on adhesive, so it looked glued in, at least on mine. Uh, down here we have the diffusers for the LEDs. Uh, there's a little bit of flashing on the back of one of mine. Something that literally no one would have ever noticed had it not been taken apart. Oh, that's not flashing. There's a uh, coating on the back of these. And they're sonically welded in there, so I can't remove them without breaking them. But there's this reflective coating, I'm guessing, to to get more of the uh, light out to the front. I'm gonna leave it alone. Start select membrane looks custom. Uh, same with their start select uh, and analog button buttons. Um, replacing these, well, there probably aren't any replacements for them anywhere. Same thing with the membrane. Um, Face buttons and D-pad, those also look like they might be custom. I don't know. I I know Analog does a lot of work with 8-bit do, 8-bit do, that controller manufacturer. Maybe these buttons happen to coincide with one of their controllers. I have a uh, theory that 8-bit do is the one who made the made this housing. Um, so maybe they just copy-pasted one of their other designs because, you know, if it works, why reinvent the wheel? And not at all a criticism. I think that's the smart way to do it. Let me get one oh, more screwdriver so I don't have to keep swapping tips. Let's pull out the speakers. It looks like it's two of the exact same speakers. One of them is just rotated. Um, like even the connectors offset because of the rotation. Ooh, and that's held in there with something. I don't want to rip that out in case I break it. See how not smoothly that comes out? Yeah, I'm gonna leave that in there for now. Until I know more about this thing or until I have a reason to actually remove it. Hey, if I could get parts, I'd pull it down all the way, but I paid full price for this thing and I'd rather like to use it. Ooh. So let's just drop the screwdriver on the motherboard. So, I don't know. There you go. I guess that's all you need if you wanted to replace the buttons if for some reason there ever were buttons. Why are the start and select buttons different keys? That doesn't make sense. Like, I feel like it would have made more sense to put the same key just offset on them. Because it's not like the buttons are actually different. Analog button makes sense why it's keyed. That has an up and down, but start and select, they're just... Boom. Wanna focus? Just that. Nothing else. I don't know. Let's put it back together now. Uh, the A and B buttons are the exact same. They are keyed differently though. So if for some reason you had buttons that had like a uh, graphic on them, you'd have to make sure you get the right one in the right spot. Uh, X and Y, same thing. Same key between the two buttons, but the orientation of the key is different. Uh, there's no keying on the D-pad, but you know what? That looks kind of like a DMG D-pad. Where are my buttons? DMG, no. There they are. That looks awful similar. Fits with the membrane. That's all right. All right, let's double check these buttons now. I uh, they aren't DMG buttons. That much I can tell. But they look kind of like Game Boy Color ones. So where are my Game Boy Color buttons?
Oh, it's the same pattern, just mirrored. Oh, that's so close, though. That's a shame. Whatever, I bet you trim those keyways off. It'll fit just fine. Actually, let's try that. Just not with that button. Do I have another set? No, I don't. Let me go find some buttons that I can trim. You know what? Let's just full send. All right, so B. That's not going to fit with any of the keys in any position. But A, on the other hand, might fit if we trim off that lower key, leaving just the two aligned ones. Close though. I'm just gonna let those buttons fall out. Doesn't quite fit. The DMG D pad is uh, kind of loosey goosey in there. The membrane keeps falling out because it's not lined, aligned properly. But it's kind of a result of the uh, button I'm using. All right, so. No easy swap for those, that's unfortunate, but I guess that makes sense. Uh, EGB? Probably not. Uh, I went to pull the drawer out and a glue stick dropped in and got it jammed. Right, there we go. Anywhere close to fitting. Where's B? Yeah, same thing. The button length itself looks to be about the same, so I don't think we're gonna run into any luck with that. As the Game Boy Color, the analog buttons are shorter, but they're quite a bit more recessed because uh, the membrane itself is quite proud. Not necessarily a bad thing. It just means mixing and matching isn't quite going to be feasible. Okay, whatever. Let's put it back together. See if I broke anything. It seems to come apart relatively easy. No major problems. try putting it together with that DMG d-pad and see how horrible it is. Alright, so how do we pick this up? We should put that back in the proper place. stuck down won't go anywhere when I flip this around and I think the easiest way to plug this back in is going to be like this upside down that lined up oh is there any markings on the back of the screen there are but we'd have to remove them remove it to get the full picture I think we can probably just figure out what screen it is based off the specs doesn't seem like it'd be that common. All right, that goes in there. And then we can just set that down right there. And then reinstall the short screw in the middle. Oops. You want to make sure that these ribbons are on top of the board, though. But good enough. So 
That works. It doesn't feel great, but it works. Let's actually put this back together proper and I can show you that it's working. easier to put in than they are to remove. At least the speakers were. And slide the back in first. So we gotta bring it down to slide the back housing under the cart slot. Then we can seat the top and slide it all the way up, and then it seats just like that. I wonder what's up with that QC sticker. Um, I don't think we need the shoulder buttons for testing. I hope not. Let's uh, try it out. Get in there, you son of a... Eight still works, or at least it still boots. All right, I think that's my test cart. <laughs> yeah. And well, there's there's one problem. You can hit all four directions at the same time with the original DMG D-pad, but it does work. Like I said, it doesn't feel great, but. It's an option if you must customize. Um, there's nothing else for the other buttons. These are all custom. This is all full custom. That's full custom. Well, actually the whole thing is full custom. Um, I believe, unless there's some 8-bit dough controller, like I said. But DMG, close enough swap. Anyway, that's all I got. I hope that was uh, useful, uh, helpful, or at least entertaining. Um, I have no idea the, a, a good way to even put this back in. Let's turn this off. I suppose I should actually fully reassemble the thing, huh? Can we even get that up from the outside? We can. Can we even get that in from the outside? Nah, looks like you gotta slip that in first. So probably slip that in and then feed it through. I like this, I like how they did the battery, that's, that's a nice, clever little touch. Alright, so we don't have to remember the pin orientation because it's pretty well bent because of the routing. Drop that in there, bingo bongo. Feed that through. Oh, and there we go. Yeah, that's easy enough. And there you go. Then we'll just clip that in and then drop it down on the clips. I'm not going to reassemble this fully at this time because I have a reason for it being apart. Uh, but I figured I'd film my disassembly and, you know, if nothing else, provide some entertainment for someone who wants to see what the inside of this thing looks like. Uh, but otherwise, that's all I got. I'll catch you all next time.